This video will show you how to program your robot to drive and turn. First, we'll cover how to use the basic driving and turning blocks. Then we'll discuss the differences between waiting and non-waiting blocks. And finally, we'll end off by looking at how to change the speed of the robot. All right, so back into the VexCode IQ editor. The first thing we want to do is set up the drivetrain of our robot. The quickest way to do this is going to File, Open Examples, head over to the Templates tab, and then click on this BaseBot Drivetrain 2 motor. What that does is set up everything for the standard BaseBot. Instructions can be found in the description. But let's also take a look at the Devices menu to see how we can change our drivetrain if needed. So in here we see the new device added for the drivetrain. If we click into that, we can change some of its settings. You'll want to make sure that the left motor and right motor are selected to the correct ports. By default, that's 1 and 6 on the base bot. But you can also select different ones if needed, or just move over the wires into the correct ports. Over here in the main drivetrain settings, we can also configure the wheel size, the gear ratio, and select which way is forward or backwards on the robot. So now that we have that all set up, we can see all these new drivetrain blocks over here on the left hand side. Let's start by dragging over the first one, drive forward over to the wind starter block. We'll go ahead and download this to the robot. What this program does is just have the robot drive forward forever until we hit the stop button. But if we want to change this so that the robot drives forward for a certain amount of distance, we can change our drive forward block for a drive forward for 200 millimeters. You'll see that the robot only drives forward for 200 millimeters and then stops. It's also worth mentioning that every tile on the Bex IQ Arena is 12 inches by 12 inches. So if we want the robot to go forward exactly one tile, we can change 200 millimeters to 12 inches. And there we go, the robot drives forward for one tile. Next, let's have a look at how we can use the turning blocks to make the robot turn. I'll swap out our drive forward for a turn right command. And we'll see that the robot just keeps on turning right until we hit the stop button. If we want the robot to only turn for a little bit and then stop, we can swap out the turn right block for a turn right for 90 degrees. If you're unfamiliar with degrees, 90 degrees just means a quarter turn. 180 degrees means a half turn, and 360 degrees means a full rotation around. We'll see that the robot turns around for a quarter turn and then stops. Let's try creating a program with multiple different movements. If I add a drive forward for 12 inches before this turn right for 90 degrees, you'll see that the robot does both of these in sequential order. Code blocks are run from top to bottom, so first when the program is started, it'll drive forward for 12 inches and then turn right for 90 degrees. Let's also go ahead and add another drive forward for 12 inches after the turn right for 90 degrees. If I want to, I can edit the block directly in the code library, like this, and now whenever I drag it out, it'll always say drive forward for 12 inches. This can be useful if you want to create a bunch of the same block, but you don't want to edit each one directly a bunch of different times. And just like that, the robot drives forward after it's turn right for 90 degrees. See if you can predict what the robot will do if I add on a turn left for 90 degrees and a drive reverse for 12 inches. One important thing to keep in consideration while working with the drivetrain blocks is which ones are waiting blocks and which ones are non-waiting blocks. Let's say I've got this example code here with a drive forward command and then a turn right for 90 degrees command. Something a little unexpected happens. The robot just seems to turn right instead of driving forward like we told it to. What's going on here? Remember that starting from the wind started block, blocks are executed in order from top to bottom. But some blocks will hold up other blocks until they've finished. These blocks usually contain words like for, or until, or wait. So for example, the drive forward for 12 inches will wait until it's finished before going on to anything else. The turn right for 90 degrees will also wait until it's finished. Some other waiting blocks include the wait for one second or the wait until. Other blocks that don't contain these words are non-waiting blocks and they'll be run instantly. For example, drive forward is a non-waiting block, so it's being run, but the robot is not waiting before it immediately starts turning right instead. This is why it seems like a robot is skipping over this step. It might seem a little strange why they decide to include a block like this that just gets run instantly and doesn't wait at all, but you'll soon see why a block like this is so important when we get to sensors later. Some blocks also have an arrow to the right of them that allows you to change it from a waiting block to a non-waiting block. But to fix the bug in our program, all we have to do is change this drive forward to a drive forward for 12 inches. So I'll move this out, get rid of this block, and then swap this one in. Now if we download our program, we'll see that our program works just like expected. It drives forward and then it turns right. See if you can predict what will happen when the following code is run. 
we have a drive forward for 12 inches, a turn left, and then another drive forward for 12 inches. If we look at what actually happened, it looked like the robot just skipped over this step. And sure enough, it looks like we used a non-waiting block instead of the waiting block. So if I swap this code out instead of turn left, use turn left for 90 degrees. Now what do you think the program will do? When we use the waiting version of the block, the robot actually performs a left turn like we expected. Lastly, I just want to end things off by showing you how you can change the speed of your robot. There's two blocks that allow you to do this, the first of which is set drive velocity, and the other one is set turn velocity. If you change the number to a maximum of 100% speed, you can change the speed of your driving and turning. So all subsequent blocks after these two ones will then have those speeds associated with them. Now, before you go ahead and make all your programs run at 100% speed, there's pros and cons to doing this. I set up a little experiment where the robot drives around in a square. On the left, it's running at 50% speed and is able to trace the square pretty well. But on the right, I cranked it all the way up to 100% speed, which creates more inaccuracy for some of its movements. When the robot's moving faster, it has a greater chance of making errors. But this isn't to say that it will move perfectly when moving at slower speeds either. Eventually, without sensors, the robot will accumulate more and more errors and eventually drift off course. But soon we'll learn how to incorporate sensors into our code so the robot can sense its environment and react to it. But for now, that's just about it. If this video helped you out, don't forget to click the like button to help others find it, and feel free to subscribe so you can stay up to date with any new videos. Thank you so much for watching.